Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. With the Top Chess Engine Championship Super Final in full swing, once we see at least one game, he would never go back to human chess. Both Leland and Stockfish are much stronger than they used to be. Not only they're updated, but both engines are using hardware that was not available previously. Some say this season's Top Chess Championship is the strongest and most sophisticated to date. Stockfish so far has impressed and it appears Lila is always not one but two steps behind. Now, was that game of round 24 any different? In the last game we saw, the mate in 1895 was spotted. Today, we do have... In fact, they're made in 65. Now remember, this is not a made in 65 moves, but plies. Just before I forget, we also have an eight move block. With this in mind, shall we shoot? We have an E4, which is met by the Sicilian. E6 was followed by this push to the E4. Takes, takes, knight of six, the usual knight c3, and now with d6, bishop e3, there comes the bishop into e7, queen f3, a6, and castles, and this is a book used. We have seen this very opening before. If you are a Schavening, a type of player, we we'll also know how to play it further. Queen f3 looks like an unusual move. But the idea here is to be able to hold on to this guy on e4. We know the knight on c3 is covering for him right now. But even if this knight comes under fire, this guy on e4 will still be safe. So the queen on f3 has also an added function. Think of queen g3 and so forth. Lila's first out of book move was this queen exit to the seventh. There comes this guy into the fourth. With knight c6, what did Stockfish do? Stockfish creates the first attack. With the knight backing off, Stockfish calculated best to trade the knights and be aware. There are many reasons why you should not use the pawn to capture. Lila, of course, captures with the queen. And one mystery move that now follows is this queen repositioning into g3. Okay. There are the first signs of stockfish getting ready for some sort of attack. Well, let's see. b5. That to this type of arrangement, the previous Sicilian game we looked at is very similar to what we have here. But still, there is a big difference only because of a few moves being dissimilar. Rook b8, which was totally unexpected, led to this pressure on d6. Now, normally, what you would expect to do is for this bishop to come under fire. If you do go for this silver sort of attack, you will be weakening some very important squares. It should be three, and now this attack on the knight. And here is where the party really starts. Take and take looks fine. But if you apply this fork, how would you be able to deal with it? Now, wherever this rook goes, this bishop would drop, and his majesty would lose his casting rights. So, this is one iteration of millions. I was just about to come back to where the game deviated, only to find out this push to e5 attacking the bishop was actually played. And with the bishop now backing off to safety, no b4, but a5 instead. Knight d5, and to this guy to roll. And with takes and takes, Stockfish wants the bishop all right. 
but first goes for this response. If you take the bishop first, after the knight is removed, b3 will be a problem. Rook a8 looks fatal. Bishop c4, stopping everything, will be met by this response. And however you choose to play it, Stockfish will be in trouble. So what Stockfish did, he played, well, I say he, the engine played this very differently. It went first for b3. Lila, without any delay, jumps the knight into the fifth. And what she's looking at next is to use the pin to take on b3. So bishop c4, which was just in time, led to this bishop move. Once again, this is where the complications start. h4 was played, but was this a dope initiative? If you go knight a4, if the knight drops, Lila will be licking at lips. Not only this bishop drops, but Stockfish's defences will be a total mess. How do you stop b3? Uh, bishop a7, for example, will lead to this retaliation. And should you try this to swap the queens, even if you take and take, do you see this bishop? Well, once he goes, that will be it. So coming back, h4 indeed looks very iffy, but if Stockfish went for it, can we find a way to criticise it? For some reason, Lila misses knight a4, and that was for this move instead. Queen f3, to this bishop repositioning, from one position, at least I, I could understand, has now become very confusing. What did this engine see? We mortal stoned. With the ability of all engines to calculate and see moves at depths no human can ever imagine, this bishop moved to the back rank probably aims to prevent the knight from having him removed. And there is no other logical explanation for this. In addition, to save the king from stepping out in order not to lose his casting rights. So as soon as his push by Stockfish materialised, Lila went on to castle. It was very much expected. But what was to follow, no one could really see. Take your best shot and execute it. And then compare it to what the engine did. This is such a hard one to work out, and yet, even after seeing it, I at least was nowhere even close in understanding it. If you see what Stockfish played here, well, don't say he went not warned. This is a move Stockfish rolled out. If Stockfish opted for such a move, then he must have deemed it as an absolutely essential one. Or if not, this has to be the most provocative response we have ever seen. Can you figure out why Stockfish in particular went for this? I looked at this king response for at least five minutes. I'm still in the dark. Now we looked at rook a8, bishop a6, and the like. But with this bishop on c4, that really stops the queen from gaining access into c3. This king move to d2 has to be the mystery move of the game. What followed, well, was indeed this rook move to the edge. Stockfish once again opts for a second consecutive king move. And as soon as the rook made his presence felt, going for this guy on the second, Stockfish calls in the rook to be able to save him. Queen c8 to this queen response. Lila moves her majesty to the corner. And now what you see here is also quite strange. Stockfish pushed on and there would be a big problem if you take in this way. If you take two, h6 is not going to help. But can we see why? If you need time, you know what to do. Are we ready to see? Boom. This is the offer using the bishop on the 6th. If you take, it will be game over. Take with a check, and after the king is forced to g8, 
This move will be the icing on the cake. No need to even continue from this point on because we can pretty much <laughs> guess what happens. So for this very reason, as soon as Stockfish found the sixth, this was how Lila played on. And Stockfish holds his position and by lining up the rook on this file, Lila goes on to, well, Lila, I believe, goes into panic mode. Stockfish 2 went into some panic mode as soon as the engine worked out the dangers of this king when it comes to king safety. Now, engines do anything to keep that king safe. That explained Stockfish's king move, or king moves, from C1 to D2 to E1 and so forth. And right now it was Lila's turn to go at 100% defensive. With the rook backing off to the seventh, Stockfish redirected the rook here, but again to pretend what this move does would be a lie. What Lila did next can only be equal to this. Let's see the move first and then try to explain. This is what Lila went for. Though rook h1 or queen h2 would have this bishop sent back to probably where he came from. Stockfish doesn't even bother. The engine used a square. This bishop on h4 used to occupy. And by charging after the queen, you also have at the same time a very convenient discovery on the bishop. Queen c6 led to this bishop to come off, and though there is a choice between two minor pieces, you still need to be very careful what minor piece to pick up first. Well, that's the only piece you're going to pick up. If you pick up the knight, for example, once you get rid of this guy, nothing works for Lila. Rook f8 gets you done in one move. A rook f7 is quite self-explanatory. So now that we went through the what ifs of picking up the wrong minor piece, <laughs> Lila grabbed hold of the bishop. Stockfish returns the knight to where he came from. And what follows next is very similar to what we saw in that game of round 17, but now with reverse colors. As soon as he's not jumped into the fourth, can you figure how Stockfish continued? The knight came off, but Stockfish does not use the bishop, but the rook. When the rook actually went, Stockfish captures using the bishop. And now via this rook repositioning, it's again another typical Stockfish mystery response. The engine tickled this bishop and all hell was about to break loose. Where would you think this bishop went and why? The answer is simply nowhere. Shall we see why? Bishop e7 is a big no-no because it breaks the rook's axis and communication with f7. If you take on f7, you will be done instantly. If you alternatively take on h7, the story remains the same and is also game over. If you try this bishop retreat to d8, taking on f7 still works because even if this guy comes off, there is now this push to the sixth and whatever remains, we don't really need to play it out. If after bishop d8, you remove this guy from h7, the job is done even faster. This spot on g7 is too weak, with three pieces attacking and only two defending, position will be hopeless. So now that we're able to understand the position a bit better, as soon as Stockfish chased after the bishop, where would you think this bishop went? The answer is nowhere. This is what Lila did. And if you're able to work out the continuation, you must be a much stronger player than most others.
Has anyone picked up this bishop from h4? If you did, it's the wrong answer. Well, this would be the biggest mistake you would ever go for. And this is not just equal to this, but this instead. With the rook on the same file as the king and the queen in control of e4, once you hit this guy off with a check, the queen will drop like a fly. And because of the auto check, the damage is already done and the game would end sooner than later. For this very reason, those stockfish is in a way desperate to <laughs> get this bishop out of his misery. The engine first moved the king out of any unwanted checks. And because this bishop h4 was dead meat, Lila hands him over in this way. Actually, I'm taking this last move back. Let's put this bishop back by h4, because this is not what Lila went for. The engine went on to execute a much better and stronger response. The rook got rid of this guy and gave Stockfish very good run for his money. Where on earth do you place your queen and why? Believe it or not, what was to follow redefines the very nature of the game. A queen at some point in time was worth 10 points, but today she's only worth 9 points. The most human response we get the queen to come here and everything looks very fine. If you take this guy off, taking on g6 will auto activate this rook. But once you place him here, the fortunes change and Lila is going to <laughs> drive you crazy. If we come back to this very threat on the queen, Stockfish appears to blunder here and rather than get his queen to safety, this is what the engine does. With the rook coming off to the queen, other than trying to answer the question if Stockfish blunders, is to see how the engine continues. Once we get to see this, the previous question will be answered automatically. We can clearly see this bishop is now in danger, but can Stockfish afford to lose him? The answer is a very big, simple yes. Shall we see why and how? If you take on d6, should you get rid of this bishop? Once you bite this guy in f7, you will also know that the king is checkmated. And what a way to go down. Checkmate. For this very reason, as soon as this knight removed the pawn on d6, Lila was more than capable of working out this tricky mate. And as soon as she opted for this type of attack, the queen came flying off. This bishop additionally disappeared. And as soon as this guy on f7 went home, there are two ways to stop that promotion. Because Lila wanted to gain the knights, she got the bishop to back off. But as soon as this move materialized, the biggest move was about to unfold. Can you spot it? Check this out. This is what Stockfish does. Trying to entice the bishop to take him. Now, Lila didn't bite into this. She got this guy going. Stockfish pushes on. And with the bishop now charging after him. Why couldn't Lila get rid of the knight? If you do, you or she will get checkmated. Rook b5 or rook a5. Bishop f8 and rook a8. And this game is over in just two moves. So as soon as we saw Lila up for this bishop response, this is how Stockfish continued. And with this guy now biting the dust, when this check materialized, Stockfish, the Terminator, Locks in a mate in 65, and this is always implies, which sounds more spectacular than a mate in 33 moves. It's the same thing, but plays are more specific. Bishop f8, rook takes check, king g7, and even here stockfish can toy with you. Rook h8 can easily be played, 
And on his next move, if the king does not get rid of this pawn from f7, Lila will get checkmated. Stockfish here had already secured a mate. How it did it was via this knight jump to protect the pawn. But with this type of initiative, dropping the rook, this was the idea behind it. This fork gains the rook with plenty of interest. King takes and knight takes to this type of response. And now via this fork, another pawn was about to go home. King d6 and to the removal of this guy. And with this king move, Stockfish checks his majesty again. King b6 and now c4 led to this push. Stockfish too rolls out his move. And with the king stepping back, Stockfish activates his king. King d8 led to this push. And with Lila now repeating, this is what we saw. G5 lets yet another soldier to fall. And with a king chasing him after the knight, Stockfish, <laughs> believe it or not, the engine has it all worked out. If you really want to see a big blunder, rather than removing this knight, this is how Lila plays it. C5 lets the king to occupy the last, and not G7, but this king move instead. H4 and G7 led to H3, and we stockfish transgendering to brand new queen. You might say that king move to F3 was a lot of tempo. It was not. If the king remained on G2, H3 would have produced a check. And with the king now being flush to the seventh, stockfish was looking at a mate in just four. In with this check, led to this, and by this repositioning, the game ended with a checkmate. This is one relatively short game between Stockfish and Leela using the Sicilian Schreveninger. And you know, if you can hear in the background, the fireworks have already started. You have seen some very, very high quality games. And the game of round 24 was no different. Stockfish appears to be tremendous form. And from time to time, it makes such amazing calculations, even Lila can't work out. What is strange is actually how the Super Vinyl started. In the first 10 games, we saw one, two, three, four, five, six decisive endings. Then, in the next 10 games, the decisive results were halved to only three. And from rounds 21 to 30, we begin to see an entirely different picture. Every single game ended in a draw, with the exception, let me check this out, of course, of this one. And the other strange thing about all these last 10 games is that the average move per game dropped to approximately 56 moves. I can clearly see the mode being only 48 moves, but there are at least two games below the mode. Game 30 was just 41 moves, and the game of round 25, using yet another King's Indian, Samish, was 40 moves. The other games that have just finished a record time are still producing some extremely high quality output, and we definitely need to look at a few of them. And this was the end of today's material. Your chess puzzle I hear, and I'm going to stick what I have been saying for the last two years. Safety always first.